will shrink by 3%, that's a prediction by IMF. And already, Indian economy is hit by 30 lakh crore in the last two months. And they predict Indian economy will be shrinking by about 5%. And all across the world, travel bans. In a survey, 70% of Indians don't want to travel abroad anytime soon. And the production has halted. It has disrupted and the GDP is expected to go down about 40 to 50 percent. All across every sector, job losses. In fact, just yesterday, Uber India fired 600 employees. It happens every day, all across. Many have cut the salaries of the employees. People have changed their priorities. They don't want to go for luxury things. And all this has led to a sudden emergence of big economy that is everything on contract basis. Companies have started declaring bankruptcy and some companies have been taken over by other companies. It continues. COVID-19 has induced people to save in long-term deposits. That's a kind of a shocking thing, but people are doing it because they are scared about the future. Brands are advertising more in digital platforms like Facebook or YouTube than on TV. Unemployment rate in India is at one of the highest, that's 27% in India in the last two months. Job creation has declined by 39%. Everywhere now people speak about the big roads. It simply means that we produce less and we consume less. We can't imagine such a disastrous thing. COVID-19 has reduced the income of 84% of Indian households and 34% of them are staring at poverty-like situation in a week's time. People speak about the new norm. What is it? Staying at home, washing hands frequently, less communication with outsiders, looking at everyone with the suspicion, avoiding handshake, this care, Wearing a mask wherever we go. Maybe the safety measures, but it has become a new norm. People don't want to go to the shop or a mall, but they want to learn to buy things online. And it has become a near normal that people are working from home in every sector. Social distancing, quarantine, these have become part of our everyday vocabulary. Now look at the few pictures that I'm just showing. We could never imagine that in life we could really have this kind of a situation. But this talks about the new movement that all of us go through. How has it disrupted the education sector? I'd just like to give you once again a, a little sample of what we are going through, those who are in the field of education. Nearly 165 countries have implemented country-wide school and university college closures. More than 1.5 billion children and youth are currently out of school and colleges, representing 87% of the world's enrolled student population. Over 16 million teachers are no longer in the classroom. They may be probably at home or they may be teaching online. India has more than 1,000 universities and there are 42,000 colleges and about 39 million students are enrolled in these colleges and universities, but all are closed now. COVID-19 has not only altered the ways of life radically, but it is also going to affect the life of all students in future for a long time to come. In fact, a major worry is the majority of our graduates may not get an employment. In fact, many, many top institutes are saying that the placement offers are withdrawn, which is a shocking reality. Now, let's really come to the reality check. The students and the teachers, we are now in an unknown territory. Literally, we are caught unaware. Teaching and learning is very fast moving online. Most of us have had just a little time are probably in few you know, days to adopt a new technology to teach online. In fact, one of the top universities in the world, Cambridge University, 
university moves greater next year classes online. Online coaching platforms see a huge demand, several hundred percentage increase. Big demand for online exam software because every university wants to really ship to the online exam. The first reaction of students to the college closure when it closed in the month of March after Corona. Uh -huh, they felt, mind, we are going to have lovely holidays. Now this was just the first few days. They were very happy. But after two weeks, life was turned upside down for our students. I just want to be given a symbolic picture, but uh, probably this talks about what Corona has done to our students who are sitting at home. Many dreams shattered. What's happening to them? Extended isolation of almost two months plus. Psychology say can trigger suicidal tendencies, fits of anger, depression, eccentric behaviors. And we are even talking of an epidemic of despair, even on the pandemic, but from this People are scared, unknown fear, <clears throat> and you can really need to serious anxiety and mental problems. Freedom is curtailed. 
they are scared of their exams, there is research and duplicate placement and these are some of the things that really keep nagging on their mind. There is terrible amount of boredom and loneliness and then all the time they are anxious and it really leads to tremendous amount of stress. And panic reactions, you know, we just walk away from others, we don't want to talk to others, we are not touching anyone, we are isolating ourselves. But Definitely, definitely. This side is isolation and quarantine will lead to lots and lots of psychological issues like stress, sleeplessness, anger, irritability. These are the things that we are going to face. I just like to once again give a few examples. Emily is the first one, a Briton, 19 year old, and she committed suicide because of fear. In India, K. Balakrishna, a 50 year old male, was the first suicide victim because he thought he could contact the virus, not that he had virus. So according to the media reports, in India alone, we have recorded about 338 suicides during the lockdown period. And the major cause for all this is not really any coronavirus, but it is the feeling of loneliness. Look at the kind of words people use. I'm feeling like locked up in the cage in my house. I'm constantly thinking about how great. I've been washing my hands. I can't concentrate on my studies. There is a mental pressure. This is what our students go through. In fact, when the humans have set up a helpline to reach out to patients for telecounseling, a record 7,000 calls were made on a single day. Now, that is a kind of despair people are going through. What are the students doing at home during the last two months at home? Actually, I would call it overstaying at home. How do they cope up? No sexual routine, no one to monitor at home. They sleep for long hours, 10, 12, 14, 15 hours. They sleep late, they get up late, they chat on the mobile. And you know, the kind of games that children or students play, tremendous amount, you know, the game industry is tremendous, increasing tremendous. And the games on mobile phone is really making them addicts. And they will spend more time on TV. Social media is seen big boost in fact, TikTok and WhatsApp are the most in 10 top 10 most downloaded apps in the mark in the month of March 2020. And the bitter truth is many of those students have not opened their college bags after the closure. Mind this, now it's almost two months plus. So what do they miss? Colleges are closed. Their daily routine of moving out of home and coming to college, definitely they miss it. Classes, exams, corridors, classmates, teachers, you may think you know they may not, they do because there are a lot of students who have examined life towards the next stage. They have freedom to move around this country and they miss the chat with the friends and they are less connected. Can be meetings, chats, and they are meeting everybody in the class face to face every day, but that they miss. Real conversation with real people, that's not there. And they used to get some inspiration from their seniors, their friends, their teachers, but that's missing now. There's no room to read something, they miss it. And a lot of team activities, extracurricular activities, they are missing it. And campus placements in the month of you know, March, April, the joy of getting a job offer and sharing it with others, they miss it. They missed the entire routines. I put so many things here. In fact, a college can conduct hundreds of webinars, online classes, but the fact remains that on campus events are the most impactful events for students. They miss it. In fact, many students in the US they have asked for refunds, they have gone to the court. They say they have been going to online classes, they want the money back from the universities. So simply students don't have motivation to prepare. And the social contact missing is leading to anxiety, loneliness, and fear foods. What are their concerns now? These are the big concerns. Will our teachers complete the syllabus? Some of the teachers, you know, we may be getting text messages like that. They are able to receive the online classes. The connectivity is even the best of the institutes in India, they say roughly 30 to 40 percent of the students have good connectivity, others simply cannot really listen to video lectures. Will they be able to face exams, will they fail, and they are not able to now you know, concentrate, there is a lot of distraction and it has got them into the lethargy mood. Placement offers will be wrong. 
many may not get a placement at all. And some are scared that they may drop out because they do not pay the fees. And they fear that they may fail in exam. They complete my degree. These are real concerns. And they are worried about the parents who are they, please. I think you know they are so worried and you know, they don't know what to do because the parents don't have jobs, then they may be able to pay the fee. So what makes for me? So what do they say? Teachers, please don't think only about completing the syllabus. Think about us. Online classes can help only a few. What about the main students? Let me just ask for a reaction of students. Few of the students, this is what they sent me. And they are saying some of our friends are planning to drop out. These are really great concern. Or is not. And they say we feel anxious that the exam dates will be announced suddenly will be caught unaware. And they are just now, you know, they are saying they are removing the news app. It is very disturbing. People are, you know, in fact, there is a boy who is asking a teacher, Madam, are we all going to die? Now, these are the fears the students really are going through now. Now, what does it all led to? Our students have formed new habits. And they say it requires about 21 days to form a habit. And it takes about 66 days to really, for the habit to stay on. And it is more than 66 days now. They have learned the new habits. Good or bad, we don't know. But it's going to stay for a long time. These are the habits. They have moved away from the daily routine of coming to college and studying. More time on mobile phones. They sleep more. Less conversation with people, more texting. They are consuming more time on TV, on entertainment. They are addicting, getting addicted to games, unhealthy sites. In fact, many, many surveys say there has been a huge increase in the number of the pornography sites, especially child pornography sites. Now, if you are aware, there is a shut clinic in Limax, which is operating just to get, give, provide help to adolescents and kids. And it is for service for healthy use of technology. And they say the walk-in per day is about 20 to 30 children with a severe amount of addiction. So therefore, during the last two months, these are really the new habits our students have got. It's a really a great matter of concern for us. And psychologists say, as I said, it takes 21 days to form a habit, and within 66 days it stays on. So let's be really be aware of this. So now let's come to other role. How do we respond? UGC, that is the agency which is giving its directions, they gave some wonderful directions. They said, set up mental health helplines for addressing the psychosocial concerns of student community in every college and university. Complete the lessons online. And in fact, this, you know, the pathetic condition is internet penetration in India is 2019, that is only 36%. And you know, hardly about 10% they listen, but others really keep it on. Student advisors should have regular communication with the students to know their progress and well-being. And not just that, after the pandemic, we have to have a lot of motivational sessions to bring them back. But this is the directive. What actually we need it? We did send some notes to our WhatsApp, some Indian files, some PowerPoint presentations, a few recorded sessions, a few online classes. In fact, we have been reading the newspapers how bullying by parents made or forced the teachers to quit jobs because it was really unmanageable to prepare and present classes online. These things, I may sound pessimistic, but Friends, let us accept the reality. What has been the impact of our classes? How many students open our notes? As for being, I am sure, very few. At least, in many groups which I posted, of the 25, hardly about two or three open the notes and see. How many watched your presentations and videos? How many responded to our quiz questions on the subjects? Most of the teachers shared. It is, if there are 20 students, probably about 10%, that's about 2 to 3 students. How many of us called our students to find out how are they doing? Now, this is something that I'm just going to take about for the next few minutes in the next part of the presentation. In fact, now we are all sitting at home, and some of us really restricted our rooms in workplaces. Sitting at home, working from home, 
not getting pretty less than Satinadella C, Microsoft C, and he says in one of the interviews in the recent times, work from home could be harmful for employees, even though I allow the employees to do it, but it has got severe, severe amount of mental repercussions. Because man is a social animal. And on my right side, you can see here, earlier man is used to be a social animal. Now we say he is a social networking animal. That is really a sarcasm, but that is very really dangerous. Now, what about the concerns of our students about the future beyond COVID-19? Maybe we can get better one day, but after that, what? These are some of the concerns. They are scared. Will they be able to really face the future. They are very skeptical. They are losing hope. Will I have a future at all? They are confused. Will I get a job? Can I go for higher studies? Will I get admission? Will I be able to pay the fees? And fear of reconnecting two, three months now, they are out of social connect. They are just restricted into their homes. And fear of learning because they are cut off from the entire environment of learning for the last two months. And these are some of the things, even after they come back, they have a serious concern. Now, they look up to one source of hope, that is we as teachers. They think we can provide them hope. Teachers are, to me, the next level of COVID warriors. Of course, healthcare professionals, the people who are training, the people who are really, the police people, they are really great people, we need to send it to them. But definitely, teachers are also, even at this point in time, our crisis, they are the COVID warriors. We need because they are shaping the future of tomorrow. And then just coming to the next part, how can we really do the mentoring for these concerns to these students? And we are now really dealing with the generations, the students, students who are born in the late 1990s. And at the time of pandemic and after, we need to have a paradigm shift as teachers. Because when I talk about the paradigm shift, the things that work may not work now. Look at just this visual. I play it for you once again. Isn't it interesting? where the, we may adopt the technology but our mindset remains the same so change is not really easy but my point is that we need to change at this point of tremendous amount of uncertainty and what do actually our students really do you know they are digital platforms now I, it's only a kind of a symbolic illustration that i put you know they are not really able to connect to us because of the disconnect that we have and you know, they are into all the digital formats and many of us, we may not be even really connected to these things. In fact, in some of the workshops I ask people, our students are addicted to PUBG. I ask teachers, what is PUBG? This is PUBG, player unknowns that you know. And many of our students are addicted and they go through mental agony. Now we need to help other students just like, you know, helping a caterpillar to grow as a butterfly. And let's really take a few steps. I just like to give a small nugget. Once the father was taking a little doctor for a walk in the forest area. They kept on walking. At some point in time, there was a small river which they had to cross. The father was telling the little girl, my dear daughter, look here, it's very dangerous. They're going to cross, but there is only a wooden plant which is kept there to cross the river. Please hold my hand so that you'll be safe. And the dad, the little girl said, No, dad, I'm not holding your hands. You hold my hands. So the father couldn't understand. He said, What's the difference? You holding or me holding is all the same. The girl, why she is, she said, No, dad. When I hold your hands, sometimes I will skip and fall. Sometimes who knows I will die. But if you hold my hands, you hold it tightly. And I'm sure you take me safe and you help me to cross. My dear teachers, at this point of crisis, this is what our students expect from us to handhold and take them out of the crisis. And I'm just showing you the screen. 
differential screening, this I have just taken a green screen shot of one of the universities in the USA, which is displaying this notice on the first day. And they feel on the first day when the students join, about 12% of them really are not having depression. And all the predictions are correct now. Many people go through a lot of depression. And by 2030, we don't have to wait. This was the earlier prediction. In another one or two years, most of the people really come to hospitals looking for treatment for depression. Now, can we really reorient ourselves and connect to this situation? Yes. It's the fact that we are totally unprepared for this new environment. That is true. But all of these will not work now. Teaching, lecturing, passing on notes, that won't really help our students. Their expectations are different now. The future is uncertain. What can we do now? There's a small picture that I'm trying to say, who caused the division? There's volatility, there's uncertainty, there's ambiguity, there's complexity. The change is so fast, we are not able to catch it up. The future is so unclear, there's no clarity about what will happen tomorrow, next month. There are a lot of decisions we need to take, but we need to keep in mind, in this situation, we need to really put our brains to work, how fast we can really make a decision. The change is so fast. In fact, a recent study said, 65% of today's grade school kids will do the jobs that haven't been invented yet. It's not direct. So in this accelerated change, how are we really going to change ourselves? Teachers, change is a mantra. As the modern saying goes, the mind is like a parrot and it works only when it is open. I just like to give you a small kind of illustration again. A man brings two birds like this and he brings it into his garden. And he puts them on a tree. One bird is excellent, it is very quick and it is fun, it starts flying. But the other bird doesn't move. He really cleans and requires, gives a lot of food. And he goes, it doesn't move. Finally, he takes a gun and says, I'll shoot you. But it doesn't move. But after some time, he's so productive, he goes inside the kitchen, takes a knife, brings it, climbs the tree, starts cutting the brand on which the bird is sitting. The bird started flying. The teachers. We are exactly in the same situation. We just really, really in a crisis. We need to really start flying. We need to adopt, otherwise we are going to perish. And the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and read. I have just given a kind of a picture here. We need to really remove the kind of things that we have got. We need to unlearn and be ready for reading. And as it is said by Stephen Covey, and he says, for most people, the biggest obstacle is their habits, not their knowledge. I usually ask people, when was the last time you read something for the first time? People sometimes really get confused. But have you not tried many new things during the lockdown, during the last two months? But as teachers, when was the last time we did something for the first time? And today is the first time that we need to experiment something for our students who are going through a lot of learning at home. Life begins at the end of our comfort zone. Comfort zone is beautiful, but we need to come out of that. Many people you know, give a lot of excuses for not changing. They say, wait, oh, did I do it that way? And if you ask why you're not going for a smartphone, why is you know, this phone, every phone is only for you know, communication purpose. They get a lot of excuses. And they say, I never done it that way. It's going to be very difficult. I can't learn. That's not my job. It's a technical job. You know, probably today in the beginning, when I could not uh, really understand that my presentation was not on. So I am also just learning about these techniques. But it definitely we cannot learn. So that's the point that I'm just saying. We need to really be ready for the change, not resist it. As Darwin said, it's not the strongest that survives, and not even the intelligent, but the most, one most responsible to change. Let's change at this point of a pandemic. And what is actually the mindset we need to really change at this point of time? This is a beautiful book by Carol from Stanford University. She says people have two kinds of mindset, fixed mindset and growth mindset. And people with fixed mindset they are always avoiding challenges and they give up easily. They don't want any obstacles. But people with growth mindset, they are ready to really embrace challenges. They want to really go for new milestones, 
let us really take a that mindset now. And I just like to at this point and from mentally, let us also talk about reverse mentoring. If we are all lifelong students, as Brent Tracy said, the more we learn, the more we learn and also more self-confidence you have. We can learn from our own students, our own children. That's what I mean by reverse mentoring. I just like to give you one small example, please, when you're free, watch the stream, it's called the intern. A 70-year-old man, he applies for an internship in a small startup company. And initially, people really are quick. But slowly, he starts learning, and overnight, within a few days, he becomes so popular in that workplace, and everybody starts coming to him. And that is what we are talking about, this period is for a change. One more example I want to give. An institute in Chennai called Lila Institute of Business Administration, they have a rule that in every, every year, at least for 15 days, the faculty members have to go for their internship. And that is because they have to change, you know, the way they look at the things they have to learn from the real uh, world. Now, what's the skill set required? What we need to tell our children for tomorrow? They need to collaborate with skills. We are working from home. It's all connected. We need to be able to work on a lot of software. Readiness for a change, new kind of lifestyle, new kind of work, lifelong learning. They need to take initiative. We don't really force them to do it anymore. They need a lot of digital skills. Social media marketing is picking up. They need to be in planning detail. Networking is a thing that is really very important at this point in time. And you know, the companies have changed drastically the way they acquire talents or recruit people. And they just go through only the social media profile of the students. They do it through online interviews. And absolutely campus placements through campus visits are not going to happen anytime soon. So how do you really know? You know, many of our students now, I always love the statement, behind a pretty successful person is a caring teacher. I've been called just an intelligent teacher, but a caring teacher. The first thing is, we need to empathize. What is this empathy? I just like to really say, I feel exactly how you feel. I still remember one of my friend's daughter, I met her once at one point in time, after a few months, she had a long hair. After a few months, I met her, she had a very short hair. I just said, my God, you didn't look too fashionable. Then she said, I'm sorry, you understand. Then he asked me what? And when we were in the class, a few people came from the cancer institute and said, you know, we may actually run out of air for preparing weeks for cancer patients after going through chemotherapy. Can you please donate hair? And on the same day, I didn't donate it. This is what I call empathy. Seeing with the eyes of another, listening with the ears of another, and feeling with the heart of another. And in the context of our teaching, we need to empathize with our students at this point in time. In one of my workshops, I asked him, a couple of teachers, can you please describe who is a teacher by drawing? And one of the amazing things that one teacher did in a KG in, in the school, was she do a picture of a ladder and I asked, this is what she said. A teacher is like a step of a ladder. It remains in the same position, but it helps its students to reach heights. Wonderful statement. Teachers, let's make that ladder. We need to mentor the students to accept them. Let's not be the same on the stage by lecturing, but let's be on their side as a guide. The best teachers teach from the heart, not from the heart. Okay, or even from the books. I'm sure you have seen this on the TV or in some parts of past, you know, kind of hormones. I'm showing a picture of a teacher from a village near Kolkata. He missed his students during the lockdown. He wanted to reach out to them, but in his house there was no connectivity. What he did, he climbed on the tree, he put up a shed there. The connectivity was excellent. Every day he would carry his book packets, he would teach the students from there. Wonderful. Oh, are we a teacher by choice or an accidental teacher? Accidental teachers will create accidents, they cannot empathize. Now what do we do mentally? We just connect the students. We really discuss their worries. We provide them hope. We can tell them what they can do for the future. And they need to trust us, we need to trust them. Please listen to them. They're crying out for attention. I just want at this point of time to give you a small 
or kind of a concept for psychological capital or people call it psychap. In the last one is this psych positive psychological capital. Our children want confidence, hope, optimism and resilience to go through this painful situation. Let us found in that hope and resilience in our students. And I just want to give you an example of what happened in Thailand a couple of years before. About 12 students and a teacher got in a cave and you know, it is on in front of water. But for 17 days they survived. None of them died. This is the best example of resilience. We can prepare the students with that resilience and hope. And what can we do? These are some of the proactive responses I think we can do as mentors beyond this crisis. Please stay connected. Don't lecture them. Listen to them. Send out a message. A survey says that 76% of students now crave for attention because they want somebody to listen to them. Reassure them that syllabus will be completed and the exams will be okay. Exams not life. One part of life. Please handhold them and allay their fears. Just like I said, the father handholding the little daughter. Give them hope. Share simple reassuring messages. Address their worries. They're worried about the jobs, high studies, parents' income. Please guide them. What are the new courses? What skills they have to go through? A lot of free courses. In fact, one of my students is saying he's doing a course on you know, peace and uh, mental well-being. Excellent. You know, they are maybe and sort from one of the top universities in the US. So let's really give the kind of information to our students. Then you know, this one experiment I'm not sharing what it is, but in this experiment called Rat Park, what they found was even the rats stayed away from drugs when they are connected with others and they are put in a social situation. So let us remember our students want connection. Let's show empathy. Let's be genuine. That's the most important thing. But the last part is they all go through stress, anxiety, fears. How can we help? Let us help with mental health first aid. If somebody is there on the road with an accident or somebody has a heart attack, we may be a rush with the first aid. But our students today go through a lot of mental issues, emotional problems. We need to offer them mental health first aid. In fact, in UK they are saying already they are preparing what? How to take care of the people's mental well-being and they are calling it preparedness for the new normal in the future. And let us really, as somebody said, the, you said the message of hope, the medium is the message. Not kind of the emoticons, not the text, but our voice, maybe our video voice, and that can really build trust with our students. They will tell them when you come back, things will be better. And let's be in touch with our students. I'm just showing an example of what Flipkart did when under the lockdown, and they said, Please, fellow Indians, we are temporarily suspending our services. Your names have always been our priority. And our promise is that we will be back to serve you as soon as possible. These are difficult times, times like no other. Never before have communities stayed apart to stay safe. Never before has being at home meant health in the nation. Now, let's take our children. Please, you are at home, but we are with you. We will you know, take you you know, on, on your hands and hand holding. I just like to you know, play a second video which was given by Indigo at the time of crisis. You may not be able to get the audio, it doesn't matter. But see the message of hope that they created for the customers. They are all saying, we'll fly again, a reassuring message. A beautiful message when people are not able to fly at that point of time. Now that's what I'm just saying. In fact, uh, you know, I just like to say the bottom line is 
our students are trying for a healthy hand. Let's offer a healthy hand and lift them up. Distancing is not social and emotional disengagement, but it is getting staying connected. Beyond the elect electronic connection, we need to connect emotionally, especially in times of uncertainty and anxiety. We are not thinking machines. We are feeling machines that think. Please understand, it is not going to be this way forever. This too shall pass. Remember that colleges are not closed, but college buildings are closed. The teachers and staff are working harder than ever. We teachers are there for you. Let's talk to them today. Ask our students how they feel, feel what they feel, and respond from our thoughts, not just from our head. Dear participants, thank you for your patient listening. Thank you for this opportunity. I would like to thank my principal, Professor Samuel Samuel, for all his support. I just want to thank two people from Central College, Samuel, Professor Kevin and Kevin, Eric, Mr. Sudhendra, for all the support that they provided. A small announcement, now you can put your messages and questions in the chat box. And I will be also pasting the feedback form. It will be open for some time. Thank you so much. Statement by Shruti King. Sometimes students take this for granted. When you're free and being close to them, what would you do at that point of time? My answer would be, let's be givers. Let's not really expect anything from them. Let them take it for granted. Isn't it our duty really being available to them? I think I would really look at it that way. Because students come into their hands with the hope that we will really be able to provide them some help and guidance. So therefore, let's really offer that and without any expectation. Can you share the courses which a teacher can go through on digital literacy? Uh, I am not an expert on that, but I am sure if you get into Coursera, there are a lot of courses related to digital literacy and digital platforms. I am sure we can upskill ourselves. Yes. So you can take your time. To click on to the link that I have sent here, that's visible now, the feedback link. To get the certificate that is required, please do that. Yes, I'm going to say I completed my part 14 now. Yeah, there are, I think I just take one quick So what's your message for finally graduate? They are really worried about their placements. So that's been the message that I have been saying. Please, this is going to be one of the toughest year. But my 
suggestion would be please tell me if there is any chance please tell them to open my higher studies. And then there are a lot of other options now available, new, you know, kind of biotechnology and things related to pharmacy and kind of for digital marketing. These are opening up in a big way. Let's really tell them. Thank you so much. Sir, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Clive, for an excellent presentation. I'm sure that all of us really benefited by being part of this particular webinar. Representing Crossland College family and all the respective participants, I thank Dr. Clive for his well deserved presentation. The program became successful only because of your participation. I thank the respective teachers from different colleges as well as from our own college for sparing their valuable time to be with us today. Thank you very much. So thank you. Let's keep sharing. Let's be in touch. Uh, it's worth interacting with you. Dear participants, please fill the feedback link. It will be open for some time. Thank you.